So for this practice, the idea is to practice the positions of the dance of Shiva. So you can stand with your feet together, make your spine feel long. So simply lengthen your spine upwards and work at keeping your spine long. First position, position one, and you can mirror me, use your left hand, then put the hand down. Position two, relax. Position three, relax. Position four, relax. And position one again, then relax. Now use your right hand. Position one, relax, keep your spine long. Position two, relax. Position three, relax. Position four, relax. Position one, relax. Those are some points to note. For all of these positions, the palm faces upwards. Another point is that the fingers are either pointing outwards, as in position one and position three, so position one, position three, or they are pointing inwards, as in position four or position two. One other point to note is that in positions one and four, the hand is at about the height of the head or the top of the head. So this is position one, probably slightly higher than the top of the head or even position four, again, higher than the top of the head. For positions two and three, the hand is at about the height of the belly button. So position two and position three. When practicing these moves, if just doing a basic position practice for the horizontal position, so-called because the hand is horizontal, you can start from position one. Alternatively, you can start from position two, finishing position two, position three, finishing position three, or position four, finishing in position four. So in the previous lesson, we practiced the horizontal positions in this lesson we'll do the vertical position so stand with your feet together make your spine long hand forward point the elbow out the palm out this is position a position b point the fingers back towards your chest your elbow forward position c oops so position a point the fingers forwards Position B, point the fingers back, the elbow forward. Position C, fingers point forward, palm turns out, but the point of the elbow points in. So no, this is position C, this is position C, this is position A. Position D, reach the arm back again, turn the palm outwards. Doing the other side, position A, fingers forward, point of the elbow points out. Position B, fingers point back, elbow points forward. Position C, fingers point forward, palm faces out as much as possible. The arm can be straight if you like, but in order to get the palm facing outwards as much as possible, you may find it's easier to bend the elbow. Position D, fingers point back, again, palms face out. Try to reach the arm as far back and inwards as possible. Depending on your flexibility, that may be difficult. So some points to know with position, for all of these positions, the palm faces outwards. Also for positions A and C, the fingers point forward. So position A, position C. For positions B and D, the fingers point back, so B and D, is that right? Yeah, B and D. And unlike in the horizontal positions where the palm height varied, for these positions the hands are about shoulder height, somewhere between the shoulder and the belly. So for position D, you may find that you're and isn't quite at shoulder height, that's fine. It may be more somewhere in between the height of the belly. Perhaps the more important thing for the vertical positions is that the fingers point either forwards or backwards and the palm always faces 
outwards. As with the horizontal positions, you can practice these positions starting from position B, finishing in position B, position C, finishing in C, position D, finishing in D, and so saying. Let's do that one more time. Position A, relax. Position B, relax. Position C, relax. Position D, relax. Position A, relax. Position A, relax. Position B, relax. Position C, relax. Position D, relax. Position A, relax. Going back to the horizontal positions for this practice, we'll do the positions again, but instead of doing them in order, one, two, three, four, one, we'll go backwards. So standing with your feet together, spine nice and long, position one, relax. Position four, relax. Position three, relax. Position two, relax. Position one, relax. Other side, position one, relax. Position four, relax. Position three, relax. Position two, relax. Position one, and relax. One of the things that you may notice, positions three, perhaps the most difficult position for the horizontal hand, for the horizontal hand positions is position three. When you're working on this, say perhaps out of the context of general movement practices, when you're working on this, one of the, perhaps the key point is to notice your shoulder. Maybe try to lift your shoulder, move the top of the shoulder forward so that you can maximize the ability for your hand, your palm, to face upwards. Bear in mind, it took me a long time to get even reasonably close to the quote, the quote ideal position. So do be aware of that, do the best that you can. So now let's do the vertical positions, but practicing, but practicing the pattern in a backwards fashion. So stand with your spine nice and long, Position A, relax. Position D, relax. Position C, relax. Position B, relax. Position A, relax. Other side, position A, relax. Position B, relax. Whoops, position A, relax. Position D, relax. Position C, relax. Position B, relax. Position A, relax. So probably one of the more difficult positions with the vertical hand positions is position C. And as with position three in the horizontal hand positions, one of the things that may help make this position easier is to notice your shoulder, to control your shoulder. So here again, you may find it beneficial to lift the shoulder so that you have more room to turn the palm outwards. And you may also find it helpful to try reaching the top of the shoulder forward. Perhaps a more important point is to play around with it. Play around with moving your shoulder to C and also the amount of elbow bend, perhaps more, full, more straight or um, decreasing the bend or increasing the bend to see if you can increase the degree of external rotation. And again, if you can't get it perfect, don't worry too much about it. Perhaps the more important point is that you can differentiate between position A and position C. Remember that for position A, the elbow points out. For position C, the elbow points in. Now for this, for this position practice, we're gonna go slightly different and practice two positions before switching sides. And we'll do the horizontal positions again first. Start with position one. Now, follow along. Position one, relax. 
Position three. Relax, change sides. Position one. Relax, position three. Relax, and actually, let's do that. Let's finish in the position we started with. So starting from the beginning again. Position one, relax, position three, relax, position one, relax. Position one, relax, position three, relax, position one, relax. Now, position two, relax, position four, relax, position two. Relax. Position two. Relax. Position four. Relax. Position two. Relax. Position three. Relax. Position one. Relax. Position three. Relax. Position three. Relax. Position one. Relax. Position three. Relax. Now, final. Set. Position four. Relax. Position two. Relax. Position four. Relax. Position four. Relax. Position two. Relax. Position four. Relax. One way you could think of these positions or this set of position changes is you call them transporters. The very first set we're going one, two, three, four, one. You could think of those as moving forward through the positions. The second set we're going backwards, so one, four, three, two, one. You could think of that as moving backwards through the positions. In this set, we're jumping positions between, we're moving between non-adjacent positions, so one and three and one. And so you can think of this as a transporter movement or the transporter set. So now let's repeat the transporter set for the vertical positions. So standing with your spine nice and tall and when if you take if you're doing these exercises and ideally you are doing these exercises while the video they should be fairly easy to remember. When you make your spine long take your time you can even try adjusting your ribcage slightly left or right try to see see if you can get even sensation particularly in the region of the rib cage and i'm saying this because this is my particular problem it might not be yours but point being here if you find you have certain problems differences in sensation between side to side you can work on those your particular problems yourself, particularly when you're practicing in your own time. But for me, the problem is the rib cage, along the back of the rib cage, or one of the problems, I should say. So I'm trying to adjust my rib cage so that I get even sensation on both sides. And since Dan Sushiva is a practice about working on balance, this is one of the ways that you can apply the balance outside of the positions or the movements of the arms. But Vertical positions, transporters. Position A, relax. Position C, relax. Position A, relax. Position A, relax. Position C, relax. Position A, relax. Position B, relax. Position D, Relax, position B. Relax, position B. Relax, position D. Relax, position B. Relax. Position C. Relax, position A. Relax, position C. Relax, position C. Relax, position A. Relax, position C. Relax. Position D. Relax, position B. Relax, position D. Relax. Position D. Relax, position B. Relax, position D.
and relax. So for this set of positions, we'll be moving backwards and forwards between horizontal and vertical positions, but we'll be starting and finishing in a horizontal position. So it's fine, nice and long, adjusting so that it feels even. If you have hip imbalances, you could try adjusting your hip posture relative to your feet or adjust your hip position relative to your feet so that your hips both feel as even as possible maybe even your neck as well. But standing nice and tall, position one, relax, position A, relax, position one, relax, position one, relax, position A, relax, position one, relax, position two, relax, position B, Relax, position two, relax, position two, relax, position B, relax, position two, relax, position three, relax, position C, relax, position three, relax, position three, Relax, position C. Relax, position three. Relax, position four. Relax, position D. Relax, position four. Relax, position four. Relax, position D. Relax, position four. Relax. If you wanted a name for these position changes, you could think of them as simple changes. You're moving from position one to the corresponding position, the vertical position, position A, and then back again. So you can think of these as exact correspondences. Way, uh, position one matches to A, position two matches to B, position three matches to C, position four matches to D. So for this practice, we'll be again moving between planes, so horizontal and vertical. Again, starting with the hand in a horizontal position and finishing in a horizontal position. But this time the movement, the connection between the positions could be thought of as a change transporter. So spine nice and long. Adjust your hips for balance, maybe even adjust, well actually let's start from the ground up. Adjust your hips for balance, adjust your ribcage relative to your hips, adjust your head relative to your ribcage. And again, when you're doing this by yourself, you may find you can spend a little bit of time trying to fine tune your balance. So even though you start at the hips and finish at the head, once you get to the head, you may find that you have to readjust your hips. So it's a recursive practice. You find you, you repeatedly work towards better and better balance. But spine long, starting position one, position C, oops, position one, relax, position C, relax, Position one, relax. Position one, relax. Position C, relax. Position one, relax. Position two, relax. Position D, relax. Position two, relax. Position two, relax. Position D, Relax, position two. Relax, position three. Relax, position A. Relax, position three. Relax, position three. Relax, position A. Relax, position three. Relax, position four. Relax, position B. Relax, position four. Relax.
relax. Position four, relax. Position B, relax. Position four, and relax. So the name of that position changing algorithm, if you like, is the change transcorder. And you could think of it as a change plus a transcorder. So, but instead of going from one to three and then to C, it's simply from one to three, or instead of going from two to B and then to D, which is a change and then a transcorder, it is a combination of those two movements from two straight to position D, or rather the pattern we're doing is from two to D, or one to C, but later on when we get into the actual movements, we'll be actually creating a curved pathway between the two positions, which and the movement itself will be called a change transcorder. For this practice, we'll be doing a change forward, so each position will be changed forward relative to the position you've just moved from. And here again, we'll be starting Actually, we'll be starting from position one and finishing in position one. So, spine nice and long, hips, rib cage, head. And something else you could do if you wanted to, you could do your, so make your neck feel long, adjust your head first, then lift your rib cage up away from your hips, move your rib cage, and then adjust your hips. It's a little bit strange, but that's something else that you could give a go to work towards balance. But at any rate, with your spine long, position one, relax. Position B, relax. Position three, relax. Position move. D, I have to think about that, relax. Position one. Relax. So let's try that one more time. Position one, relax. Position B, relax. Position three, relax. Position D, relax. Position one, relax. Other side, position one, relax. Position B, relax. Position three, relax. Position D, Relax. Position one. Relax. So I probably, I may leave that mistake in. And the reason being is that on occasion, perhaps quite frequently, you will make mistakes, and that's fine. The nice thing about Dan Sashiva is the sets, that the sets are quite short. So if you make a mistake, just start over again, or realize you've made a mistake and fix it. The nice thing is, because the positions are so clearly defined. In this case, the pattern of positions that we're moving through is clearly defined. It can be easy to see that you've made a mistake. Sometimes you don't see the mistake until afterwards when you finish in an incorrect position. So you just repeat the movement. And if you continually make the same mistake, then you look back to see where the mistake was made so that you can practice that particular particular sequence so that you can practice without making so that you can work towards practicing without making mistakes anyway that was the change forward sequence next change back so here again spine nice and long starting in position one and finishing in position one position one relax position d Relax, position three. Relax, position B. Relax, position one. Relax, position one. Relax, position D. Relax, position three. Relax, position B. Relax, position one. Relax. So you notice I'm, maybe you'll notice I'm trying to adjust this shoulder. This shoulder for me in particular has some issues 
And what are the advantages of just practicing the positions and relaxing in between each position is you can actually hold the position if you choose and you can work at adjusting any position that you have difficulty with. If it's all positions that you have difficulty with, take your time, spend a few moments to adjust if possible. So for me, what I'm doing in position one is trying to spread the shoulder blade, move the inner, the top inner edge downwards and the bottom tip outwards, this sort of action, which if you've learned how to fit your shoulder blades, is a little bit easier to understand. Another way to think about it is this point, the coracoid process at the top of the shoulder blade, trying to move that back while moving the bottom tip of the shoulder blade outwards and forwards. So it's almost like I'm tipping the shoulder blade, I guess tipping the shoulder blade back relative to my rib cage. And actually for that, what I need to do is create a downward pull on my ribs using my spinal erectors. I find that sometimes helps. So when working, if you're interested in using Dancer Shiva to work on balance, then it can be helpful to have a more detailed knowledge of your anatomy of the muscles. So using your muscles both to feel and control your body to generate feedback and to control the relationships between your bones. But uh, you don't have to do that. You can simply practice the movements as best you can and work towards balance that way. But for myself, I found since I was an engineer and I, my job is to fix problems, the better I understand my body, the better I can feel and control it, the easier it is to work towards better balance between the left and right, between the left and right sides of the body. Now, we could go through this whole set again, starting, so we've started in horizontal positions, could do the same thing, started in vertical positions, but rather than me doing a set of videos for that, I'm going to invite you to do those yourself, to do those yourself. So repeating this last half where you're moving between horizontal and vertical positions, do the same thing, but start in vertical positions, move to horizontal positions. <laughs> 